This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Stick around until the end of the video to learn more about a special deal they're making available through my channel. I've always been interested in maxing out my stats. In other words, I want to be as strong as possible, as fast as possible, I want as much endurance as I can get, and as much mobility. I want to be smart and creative and agile, like a superhero. That was my goal when I created the channel, and it's still my goal today. And to that end, I once had this idea of creating a kind of real-world power level system. 9,000! A single number or score that would indicate the totality of someone's fitness and performance, just like power levels in Dragon Ball Z. But I've since sort of given up on that idea because I learned that there's simply no one number that can possibly encapsulate the totality of human movement and potential. When I was young and naive, I would have told you it was strength times speed times endurance times mobility times intelligence. And you could perform a gauntlet of tests to get a score for each of these and then just adjust the results using some fancy maths. But what kind of strength? Max strength? How are we measuring this strength? With traditional lifts? Which lifts? Intelligence is the most problematic of all. Measures of intelligence are so flawed as to be borderline arbitrary. What about technique? Being strong and fast isn't that useful if you're uncoordinated. Being strong and fast doesn't automatically make you great at running, fighting, climbing, or anything else. I've come to view this goal quite differently in recent years. I've learned that if you want to achieve your maximum performance in a way that's realistic and sustainable, you have to approach it in a very smart and logical way. And that means accepting compromise. And that means understanding what maximum performance looks like for you personally. There is no objective maximum performance. But then I stumbled on a concept from engineering that perfectly described the difficulty I was facing and provided a roadmap for how to move forward. The Pareto Frontier. So the Pareto Frontier basically describes a set of multiple objectives and the hard limit of what can be achieved across those different goals. I recently watched a video on the subject from a channel called Universal Resilience, where the presenter used a brilliant analogy that I'm gonna borrow wholesale, designing a Swiss Army knife. So you see, a Swiss Army knife is an extremely useful tool because it's adaptable and can be handy in a variety of different situations. It's a knife, it's a screwdriver, it's a toothpick, and most importantly, it's small enough to fit into your pocket. But the catch is that the Swiss Army knife is not optimal for any one of its goals. The knife is small and relatively blunt. The screwdriver is fiddly and has a terrible grip. They'll work in a pinch, but they're not perfect in any scenario. Much better for cutting things, then, is an actual kitchen knife. The problem is that you can't make the knife on the Swiss Army knife much bigger, or it will take up space for one of the other tools, or it will make the Swiss Army knife less pocketable overall. You can't make progress towards one goal, then, without making sacrifices in another area. Just like a car designer might need to weigh up considerations like fuel efficiency, boot space, acceleration, top speed, price, repairability, all of which are competing to some extent. Now a Swiss Army knife that has a bigger knife, better screwdriver and more tools than another one, all while being the same size, is objectively better. But there will come a point where the Swiss Army knife has achieved the perfect balance of traits, where the knife is as long as it can get without impacting on the other tools. Now it becomes a choice. Do you personally want a bigger knife or a better screwdriver? This is the Pareto frontier. The point where any meaningful progress towards one goal will necessarily result in compromise in another area. And at this point, Swiss Army Knife A isn't better than Swiss Army Knife B, rather it comes down to purely personal preference. Do you cut more or do you screw more? Now, let's apply this principle to training across multiple disciplines. Because if we're trying to max out our performance, we need to consider a large number of goals strength, speed, endurance, mobility, reflexes, and skills. To an extent, we can train all of these things simultaneously and improve in every area. But there will come a time where we reach the Pareto frontier, where we have maxed out each area as much as is possible without detracting from the others. And this is why I have never really been interested in traditional strength training. The myth that gets spread so often on social media is that getting strong is all you need. And the reason people say this is that they believe getting strong will make you better in all those other areas. Having a great strength potential will mean you can generate more power. 
it will mean you have more speed and explosiveness. Having greater strength will mean that you have more capacity for massive lifts, but also higher reps on smaller lifts. In other words, it'll boost your endurance, in a sense. This is true to an extent and for a while, but eventually that changes. And at that point, getting stronger will actually eat into your endurance and your mobility. Once you become extremely strong, you'll probably be very heavy. That means it will take more energy to move, resulting in you're getting more tired more quickly. After a certain point, this will also hurt your speed and your mobility and your agility. You also won't be optimizing for adaptations that could make you a better endurance athlete. Things like mitochondrial density, angiogenesis, lung capacity, etc. You might be able to bench a lot of reps on a light weight, but this won't help you when you need to run more than 50 meters. And this is borne out in Dragon Ball 2. When Golden Frieza takes on Goku, he probably has a massive power level, but he gets tired too quickly to be effective. Or how about when Future Trunks achieves Super Saiyan third grade against Cell? His power level is huge and he's impossibly strong, but that power level doesn't capture how this has affected his speed, and he simply can't hit the much faster Cell. Conversely, after a certain point, doing lots of long distance running will start to break down muscle. So you have to choose how much strength do you want and how much cardio. This is also why steroids are such a bad idea. Once athletes reach their limit, they will often take steroids to try and push further. Does this break through the Pareto frontier? No, it just hurts other areas that you maybe don't see. Things that are arguably more important like emotional stability, liver health, heart health, tendon strength, longevity, even facial attractiveness. Your body is eating itself to achieve more strength. There is always a cost. It's a mathematical certainty. And it's why our body has these limits in the first place. It's not an accident. It's a design that evolved over billions of years because it's optimal. It's the optimal balance. Think a steroid abusing YouTuber is a better engineer than nature? And the problem isn't only that these things compete after a certain point, it's also that you only have so many hours in a day. You only have so much recovery capacity. So the time you're giving to your weightlifting is time you're not spending running. And you also have other non-training goals you need to consider. Just like the Swiss knife engineer needs to consider pocketability, weight, price, safety, marketability, we also need to consider outside factors like resources, time, being a good parent, work, interest levels. When deciding how much I can train towards my multiple goals, I need to consider how I'm gonna balance that with spending time with my family, working on this channel and enjoying my hobbies. Welcome to the Pareto Frontier. The good news is that you can treat this hard problem just like an engineer would, by considering what's most important to you, what the goals you're trying to accomplish are and how you want to look and feel. That is functional training. It's an entirely personal choice, but I will give you just one or two little pointers that might help you make key decisions. First, maxing out just one trait is always a mistake. While we've talked about strength and speed and mobility as these separate things, the truth is that they're actually just points on a gradient. They aren't separate categories at all. In fact, if you want to get a little bit philosophical, I don't really believe in categories in general, but perhaps that's a philosophical debate for another time. Any movement will require a combination of strength, endurance, mobility, intelligence and coordination. If you completely neglect any one of these areas, you'll ultimately cease to be functional at all. Second, skills are your secret weapon. While you can't get infinitely stronger and infinitely faster, your ability to learn new skills and abilities is far less finite. In fact, it's limited really only by your time. I recently learned a simple cue that has massively improved my kicking ability, making them sharper and more powerful instantly at no cost to any of my other abilities. And those gains came much quicker than if I just tried to build leg strength. Manage your traits in accordance with the Pareto frontier, but then stack those skills on top. And the great thing is that this is actually the message of Dragon Ball Z as it relates to power levels. Simply reading a number doesn't tell you anything about a fighter's abilities. Someone might have a much higher power level, 
but they can still be taken out by an amazing technique or just a little bit of tenacity. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you are interested in training that's designed specifically to max out all of your different traits, at least as far as is possible within your time constraints, then check out my ebook and training program, Superfunctional Training 2.0. That is the entire point of Superfunctional Training, and it achieves this using a combination of functional movements and big drop sets that take you from heavier movements to lighter, high repetition movements. It's very approachable, it's adaptable to any ability level, doesn't require any special equipment, and you can get it in the link in the description down below. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. By the way, guys, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is a website building platform that makes it extremely easy to create websites in a matter of minutes. Like, literally, you can start your website now and have something up and running before you finish your cup of tea. You can do this either by using their powerful AI tools to have something custom built, or by selecting from their wide range of templates and then customizing them to fit your needs. Either way, you'll need zero coding knowledge, and the end result is a website that looks professional, modern, and clean, and runs perfectly. That's why some of the biggest websites on the net are powered by Squarespace. Squarespace also has all the additional features you could need, from e-commerce tools for selling online, to fully featured formatting tools for creating beautiful blog posts, to analytics for seeing how many visitors you're getting and where they're coming from, to search engine optimization for getting to the top of Google, and appointment scheduling for scheduling services online. If you want to check it out, then head over to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Bioneer to get 10% off your first domain or website. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.